episode number 95 of the LSR podcast. My name is Matt Brown, joined each and every week by the brightest minds in all of the gaming industry. With me, I have Adam Candy, that is 2 E's No Y version. I have with me Dustin Galker. You should follow them on the Twitter machine where they give all of their hot takes and share all of the good information and the hard work that we're doing over there at LSR, at Dustin Galker, at Adam Candy, 2 E's No Y. If you want to follow me because you hate yourself, at Matt Brown M2, we are going to hit up, of course, a little bit of Tennessee news. They're going to get some new options over there. Of course, we always have our state updates whenever we go through here. Virginia going to have some new options as well and maybe a new stock for us to get involved with. But uh, let's kick things off here, guys, with New York. And this is something that we always talk about here on the pod, but... It seems as if, as we talked a little bit about last week, that maybe there are there are other reasons why maybe we're a little bit more optimistic this time through here. And it seems as if we're getting at least some optimism coming out of the guys who we seem to get optimism from when we're talking about online sports betting in New York. It's true, Matt. And the reason that we look at it a little bit differently this time is that the governor is in some form on board. And so this is the first time that we've gone into the budget negotiations and seen the House, the Senate, and the governor all with sports betting mobile as part of their proposals. And that puts us on much different footing than where we've been in the past, where hope has largely been based on it gets through the assembly, you hope, I should say it gets through the Senate, it goes to the assembly, you hope it makes it through the assembly, and then you also hope that maybe the governor will come around on it. Well, no, everyone is at least starting from the footing of, we want to have mobile sports betting. And what we saw over the weekend, in fact, late Saturday night, was that the Assembly included it in its budget, the Senate included it in their budget, both were approved. And so we talked to Senator Adabo and uh, Representative Pretlow this week. They talked about the fact that they feel like there is common ground there for negotiation with Governor Cuomo, who, Matt, as you alluded to, has some political troubles going on here at the moment. So we're not really sure how strong a footing he would be operating from. The one thing we do know is that the fact that this was included in the assembly budget removes a significant stumbling block to what has been dealt with in the past because assembly speaker Carl Hasty has been someone who has been traditionally, whether opposed on his own accord or aligning with Cuomo, has not allowed sports betting mobile to come up for a vote in the assembly. And obviously we're well past a standalone bill getting a vote. It's in the budget. So, Dustin, look, we understand why New York is incredibly important. We've seen the numbers come out of New Jersey. We know that at least a very healthy portion of that is from New Yorkers that are crossing over the border. For a while there, it was even from Pennsylvanians that were crossing over, but a lot of it is New Yorkers that are crossing over the border. That being said, when you look at the numbers coming out of Illinois and you look at the numbers coming out of Michigan in basically the very beginning of all this, I mean, I think we had high hopes for New York I don't know if we had high enough hopes for New York once we've kind of got this sample size of these other big sports crazy, but lots of pro teams, lots of college team states in Illinois and Michigan. That sample size has me thinking that maybe I underestimated what even New York could be. Yeah, I mean, who knows exactly what a mature market in New York would look like, right? But it's uh, it's going to be substantial. And yeah, we're we're going to talk some numbers in other states um, in February after the Super Bowl. But it's you know we're we're New York is the is going to be if it happens this year would easily be the biggest market for for sports betting in the United States. You know, yeah, we've seen Illinois already. You know, uh, they're, they're going to be at some point probably in the NFL season, but approaching a billion dollars in handle, if not not surpassing that. We're certainly we're already good, we're definitely going to see New Jersey there. Will we see a Pennsylvania, other states, uh, you know, getting the, yes, they're, we're going to see that much. So we're starting, you're starting at a starting point. Some of these states that are smaller than New York are going to tap, are going to hit like $10 billion annually. So, you know, you can probably get close to doubling that in New York. Uh, you know, uh, if, in, if everything breaks right and it depends on how you do it, there's a lot of devils in the details, details there, but yes, absolutely huge market sports crazed uh, area, obviously with New York city and yeah, huge untapped market for, for sports betting. So, Adam, before we move on here from New York, we did mention that there is a healthy amount of the, you know, player pool and, 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 hand, and handle that are, especially during NFL season, 
that is coming from New York over in New Jersey because we're we're looking at, you know, at least on these games that are only once a week, you only have to make the one trip over. You can make your bets, go back and go on about your way as opposed to these sports that are happening every single night. And it's a little bit more arduous task to, to, to do that. But certainly during NFL season, have we looked at or estimated or has anyone started to think or do you care to speculate on what kind of ding this would put in the New Jersey market, should this kind of get pushed through here in New York as, you know, again, it seems like we continue to get more and more positive momentum. Well, there has been research done to this end by Eilers and Crycheck, and they've looked at the amount. I don't have it off the top of my head. Dustin might know it. Um, that is what New York is missing out on by New Jersey, essentially having the market to itself. What we do know, the hard evidence that we have comes from FanDuel, and FanDuel has told us that a quarter of their New Jersey accounts are registered to New York addresses. So if you were to mm -hmm. say that a significant portion of those would then choose to wager in New York, then if you take the operator who is the market leader in New Jersey and cut 20 to 25% out of what they're seeing in terms of handle, then that would be significant. What we don't know is that how many of those players are successful players? How many of those players are their whales? Um, you know, because that would have a much larger effect if it's those players as opposed to if it's a 20 or $40 a game rec player. Right, right. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I would always think that people would opt for the easy, you know, the easy go at it, and that would be just staying at home. But again, we don't know if this were to go through, how soon all the licenses would go through, if they would all launch at the same time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, you know, maybe that doesn't dip in near as bad in year one. Maybe that's more of kind of a year two type situation, Dustin, because maybe we see people who are, you know, loyal to fan book, uh, uh, FanDuel, for example, say they don't are one of the first ones to launch, whatever it might be. They're, they're loyal to their sports book. They might, cons they might keep just making that train ride uh, across the border there as opposed to, you know, switching books. We've seen, we've seen people are pretty sticky. Yeah. But I'd still say, yeah, I mean, I don't know how loyal they are to FanDuel, but if mm -hmm. you can do it on doing in your underwear from your couch, I agree. Doing, I, I would doing that. personally, <laughs> yes, I would personally prefer it in my underwear, but you know, again, there's some of these, some people weirdly enough, it seems like they want to, uh, to stick with the one, with the one book for whatever reason. Uh, we always preach to have multiple outs. We just say that here, you know, always have multiple outs so you can compare lines and do your shopping. Uh, Dustin, let's talk about uh, let's talk about FanDuel and, and more importantly, their parent company Flutter here. Listen, we talk about the stocks a ton. We've talked about Penn going through the roof and built mainly off of the, the Barstool Sportsbook brand. We've seen the DraftKings stock absolutely skyrocket to a point to where Jason Robbins is now a billionaire. We've seen even all of these other gaming stocks really kind of off of a lot of the hype about sports betting. I mean, look at the at the beginning of the pandemic, these things all bottomed out, you know, and then people saw like, oh, there's this online gaming and there's online sports betting. And people can still continue to actually gamble and wager and, and make bets. And and then we saw all of basically these stocks, you know, rebounds. MGM, you know, rebounded, uh, Win, Sands Corp, all these, all these other ones. Uh, rebounded here, and so it looks like the biggest of the big might be, at least the market leader in the majority of the states, might be kind of flirting with the U.S. here. Yeah, I mean, what you look at here is what you just said, is all these companies getting multiples of their current value uh, in the U.S. market. So, you mean, yeah, we, we you know, how much of Penn National and uh, value Penn National's value is is tied up in Barstool a lot. How much is DraftKings on the future of the U.S. market a lot? So you know if you're looking at it, uh, Flutter is not trading at a multiple of like any of these companies, mm -hmm. uh, even though it owns Fanduel because it, you know that is not its not its only business. It is a part of its business. So what came out uh, earlier this week is that the, this company is considering a quote unquote small shareholding in Fanduel for a U.S. listing. It is that does not mean that Fanduel is just going to get spun out as its own entity in the U.S. Uh, you know Flutter is certainly does not want to just give up the U.S. business and say, hey, go do your own thing. That's part of its growth story uh, as well as far as an international operator. So it will be interesting to see what a, what a fan, what a, what a, even what a, a limited engagement of for FanDuel publicly trading would be because, again, it, it is the, the current market leader and we're seeing these huge multiples for all of these other online gambling or casino companies based on that future. So it'll be interesting to see if that does come to fruition. Adam, I, uh, you know, we're, we don't give stock advice here. We, we say that we're not stock advisors. We say this all the time. What I will say 
is should FanDuel enter the U.S. market? And given what every single other gaming stock has done once they have gone public and once they have uh, kind of gotten a little bit of publicity around them, I can't imagine that that FanDuel would not do the same. It seems seems very hard for me to wrap my brain around when they go, oh, if you liked DraftKings and if you liked Barstool and if you like MGM, guess what? We're bigger than all of them when it comes to sports betting. It kind of seems like that would be a pretty easy thing to sell. And people who are far smarter than us, which of course is most of them, but the folks that we follow on <laughs> yes. Twitter who tend to have stock experience and also weigh in on sports betting have been saying exactly what you've been saying for a long time, that <laughs> DraftKings is sort of trading at these huge multiples on hope and a growth story, whereas Flutter can point to, hey, by the way, look at this global business that we have that has an enormous amount of brands. I mean, Sky and Stars and Betfair. And I mean, there, there's so much that they can point to that it obviously would come in with a ready-made story that most of the others that have seen their stock soar don't even have it, Dustin it, that actually just reminded me of something whenever Adam brought that up uh, we talked a little bit about that this this Bally's last week and then now it comes out this week that they have put in an offer to buy the WPT from the company allied that owns them as well and I I see a bunch of parallels kind of going on here with Flutter and Bally's. It seems as if Bally's kind of looked at Flutter and said, oh, they're the market leader and they've got all these different brands and that's really, really working for them. It almost seems as if Bally's is kind of like taking the Flutter playbook and kind of using it on their own just to a smaller scale. I mean, I'm not comparing Monkey Knife Fight to to <laughs> FanDuel, obviously, and I'm not comparing, you know, I'm not comparing, you know, the WPT to Poker Stars. I'm not doing that. However, it seems like they're trying to kind of get an entity in each way that people go about acquiring customers, or at least that we assume that there's a ton of crossover anyway. So it almost is like they're taking the Flutter playbook and kind of kind of going with that direction. Yeah, I mean, if you're, you know, again, we've talked about Bally's maybe even as recently as last week. I forget, but uh, they, they're they're selling that we can own, if we own a lot of different parts of the ecosystem that you need to be a successful online gambling operator. That's a compelling story, and it could help them win in the long term. Uh, maybe maybe not be number one or two, but certainly be, you know, a compelling uh, market entrance. So yeah, I mean, owning uh, owning a poker brand, you know, we have a growing number of states. There's a lot of people, you know, I'm st I'm always bearish. Uh, you and I are both always yeah. bearish on the future of poker but you know there there's something there you know you get more states involved where we're having other states actually look at legalizing other forms of online gambling other than sports betting you know if you want you, you want to have a poker brand and you know banking on the the resurgence of of poker in the next mm -hmm. you know 10 15 20 years hey maybe uh but you, you need to be prepared for it. you can't just build poker you know out of right. out of the blue right and uh so that, that and, you know, you look at FanDuel or Flutter and you see you, like they do this, too. They have the poker part of this as well in, in poker stars. They have horse racing, which is, you know, generally not a mm -hmm. uh, is a different kind of product, but it's still a type of gambling and still provides some sort of funnel for people to get into to the other things they do uh, with their TVG brand here in the United States. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of interesting things going on with Bally's. Again, I, I, I feel like we say this every time we talk about Bally's. Who knows if it's going to work? But yeah, it is. It is. At least, <laughs> exactly. it, 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 it's something. It's it's a you know yeah. it's short of just spending a lot of money on marketing, which I don't which I don't think is the best thing for them long term. Building something that is sustainable and can get them into lots of different parts of the gambling ecosystem in the United States certainly makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's just when when we saw that news come through yesterday, I just it, it kind of like I I just saw the connection there. It was like you know it seems like they're kind of doing that whole flutter thing. Just like let's have our let's let let's have an arm in every single one of these acquisition tools and. And see if it works. And like we said, we, we'll find out if it works. Who knows? Um, but uh, at least they're they're going about it in a way that at least is proven to work for for Flutter and them over there. Uh, Adam, let's uh, let's continue with uh, you know at least some Flutter alums here. Anyway, um, points bet goes in and makes an acquisition here. Uh, yeah, our our friends at points bet continue to tap into the cash uh, that we thought maybe was going to be harder for them to come by, but we know they did a raise recently. And $43 million of that raise went into a company called Bantech that's Irish-based with some alums from Flutter who are trying to improve the in-play experience. And it seems to me that if you're going to make an investment right now as a sports betting company in something tech-related, 
improving your in-play experience is a smart way to be spending money because you're yes. looking at the long game here and you're looking at a differentiator in the long game that potentially is going to give you something to sell to people that other sports books might be lagging in. And so they make this purchase. It involves also some of the executives who were Flutter alums, who were part of this company, coming on as executives uh, within the points bet structure. And it seems to me to be the kind of purchase that you might not notice here in the short term because, of course, once you make a tech acquisition, it, it raises all of the flags about how do we integrate yeah. that tech into what we do. So it could be a long-term sort of thing. But if PointsBet can do something that separates its in-play from other companies or at least keeps it on a level footing, then that seems to be a wise way to go. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. I mean, there is... Outside of just the app functionality itself, so outside of just the basic app functionality and it be, being user-friendly, I think the very best thing that these companies could definitely be investing in is certainly the in-game experience because you're, if you don't have good in-game experience, and Adam, this is something you and I have been sitting you know, six feet apart and, and had this experience, you're losing out on money and potential business and whatever because if you can't get those bets in, you are just missing out on so many different opportunities. So if you are able to even increase what you're doing by, you know, half a second or a second, it's it's a huge, huge deal to be able to get like these business and things of, of people out there. So I'm with you 100% on that. I think that this is a, a long game play and I think it's the right long game play for these for these companies that are, you know, pretty pretty satisfied with the app and the product that they're putting out there on the surface. So getting deep inside and, and getting some of the back end stuff going is, is certainly uh, smart for those guys. Uh, Dustin, we, I alluded a little bit and I wasn't trying to uh, spoil anything for later here in the pod, but I was talking about some numbers and, and how that might be indicative of what we could expect and just how big things could be in New York. And because we get a couple of these numbers coming out of these States that uh, especially Michigan, you're going to talk about that, you know, we just don't have uh, a ton of sample size here, and these numbers are just absolutely staggering. Yeah. Uh, first off, can if we can make a plea to state gaming re regulators, uh, whoever whoever released these numbers, to to spread it out a little bit for Adam and I's <laughs> sanity. We we had like every number known to man drop yesterday within a very small amount of time. So if you like like a day between, <laughs> that would be great for all of us. We can all get a, get in a meeting together. Anyway, that's that's a very very inside baseball thing, but like think like literally Pennsylvania and New Jersey dropped at the same time. We also got Michigan yesterday morning. Uh, the first look at a full month of what Michigan looks like. Uh, Three hundred million dollars in handle. It is the biggest launch of a first full month. Let me make sure I get that right, which uh, so I think surpassed Tennessee. Uh, so uh, Michigan had actually launched in January for for ten days. So this was the first full month, and that is the biggest first full month of online sports betting in the United States. Not shocking, as as the state launched with uh you know 10 platforms live everybody went at the same time full month right is right uh you know with with the super bowl as an acquisition point so this is not a shocking number uh, there um the other states indiana pennsylvania new jersey uh we're, we're seeing we saw what looks like maybe a little bit of a shocking thing is then that there is a drawback in how much betting activity there was even with a, a month that's that includes the super bowl now this is maybe not quite as as weird as it might seem we're still uh, you know you look year over year february was still a mostly more normal month there is still huge growth in in these states year over year mm -hmm. but when you look at ne next to january there's actually a drawback despite the presence of the super bowl so um you know this i don't think this is a this is definitely not a sp sky is falling moment uh for any of them but you know we saw uh, New Jersey about 750 million handle that was down. Pennsylvania about half a billion in handle um, that was down. Uh, Indiana down under 300 million as well. So these are all down from January, but up year over year. And now we're going to have a hard problem of like really gauging what growth looks like in the market because we're now we're going to be gauging uh, these months where there was no sports. So we're gonna we're gonna see what happens in terms of how it all interacts. But these are still very big numbers. None of these markets are are certainly done growing despite the fact that we saw some pullback. In, in these given months for February. Adam, I have no official information on this. I've not done any polls. This is just anecdotally, and I think maybe you would agree as well. Uh, the number doesn't shock me either that there's a little bit of, of, of drop, and the reason being, one, this college basketball season has seemed to got to seem to have gotten basically a tenth of the hype of a normal college basketball season with all the weirdness, all the pauses, all the things like that. And even this NBA season, 
I think outside of just the people who are really big NBA fans, I, I think the casual fan as well, just with the weirdness of COVID, the postponement of games, the, the, the holdover from last season where there was the big pause and then the bubble and all of that, I don't think we're really back to normal as far as fandom really goes. Of course, we still don't have a ton of people in the stands. There are people trickling back into stadiums and things like that. But that also attributes to enthusiasm around a sport, people wanting to get involved, maybe even from a financial standpoint and betting on a game if they're going to go and watch it anyway. So I, it doesn't really surprise me there's pullback here in 2021 for a, a number of factors. All the factors you just mentioned make a lot of sense, including the fact that there was one NFL game in February. Of course, it was the largest NFL game. But mm -hmm. let's just use New Jersey as an example of what you're talking about there uh, to go back to what Dustin mentioned as well. So if you have 100 plus million wagered in New Jersey on the Super Bowl and you end up at essentially 750 million wagered for the month, 650 million on what is essentially NBA, NHL and college basketball I'll take that if I'm in a growth state. Yeah, I will absolutely take that. Um, and the other thing worth mentioning is that revenue-wise, if you look at February 2021 versus February 2020, which, of course, had a very similar sports calendar, uh, revenue in New Jersey was up more than 100%. So in the end, when we talk about tax revenue that goes to states and the reasons for regulators and legislators to look at legalizing sports betting, well, even with less wagered, you ended up with more than double the revenue, so you end up with more than double the tax revenue, ultimately. So, you know, there is a story that requires more than looking at just month to month, how did the handle go? And as you mentioned, the weirdness of this year extends beyond just fandom. I think it also goes into unemployment, too, when you look at people's mm -hmm. uh, disposable income capabilities, right? Because we don't know. Uh, how it's affecting different places. There have been millions of jobs lost during the pandemic. There are so many variables right now that are going to take a long time for us to get an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, probably into 2022. So I'll keep with you here, Adam. Uh, Tennessee, one of the interesting markets out there. We have mentioned time and time again here on the program, no physical casinos located in Tennessee, so it was an all-online state whenever they launched, and outside of uh, Billy Bob's Gambling Parlor that had a little bit of uh, a little bit of trouble here, uh, most of the big name brands have gotten involved there in Tennessee. It looks like we have another player that is going to be entering uh, the that's market. That's Billy Bob's payday loans to you. Um, so uh, <laughs> yeah, in Tennessee, we saw William Hill go live here. That's the fifth sports book live in Tennessee, and it's all big players uh, thus far. FanDuel. DraftKings, MGM, uh, William Hill, and of course, uh, the aforementioned local shop. So there are a couple of others in the pipeline. Win should be live there before too long. I, I find it interesting that we've had states like Michigan, especially Colorado, where we have these markets that launch quickly to get a lot of operators that really just go, go, go once the gates open. It hasn't really been the same in Tennessee. And I think some of it has to do with what's going on with regulation there. I think some, it also has to do with there are a number of operators who are waiting to see how this whole required 10% hold thing plays out. Uh, they're trying to figure out how is Tennessee going to enforce this? Are they going to enforce it? Is it just going to be a matter of paying whatever their piddly little fine is and then you know moving on with their lives for not uh, holding 10%? Or is this something that is going to cause complications? So to me, this was one of those things where Tennessee sort of needlessly put itself in a spot where the market is probably a little slower in opening than we would have expected, even when we were looking at Tennessee at the beginning of uh, their market a couple yeah. of months ago and saying, wow, what a huge first month they had. So much money was wagered. Yeah, so much money was wagered with only really three legitimate books. Dustin, taking a look at one of the states that is pretty new to the market here in Virginia, shout out to one of our sister sites, Play Virginia over there. If you are in Virginia and wants all the information, Dan up doing a great job running that site. Um, we are getting, listen, Virginia, we're getting a lot of action and we are getting a lot of people involved there rapidly. Yeah, the latest news, three more licenses were uh, 
awarded for sports betting Virginia. Now, this is not go live. This is the ability to offer sports betting in the state. So the big one out of that, Barstool Sportsbook, Penn National Gaming's uh, offering, obviously, has been uh, making lots of noise, getting in new states, uh, recently launching in, in Illinois as well just last week. Uh, so um, definitely a big deal for that. That's uh, that's the one that I think is, uh, in addition to the six, uh, six existing books there, this will be a, a major player, obviously, in Virginia, anywhere it goes live. And then we have Bally, the aforementioned Bally's, and Gold Nugget Online, which is not really been uh, a huge player in sports betting. It is a, it has been a monster in online casino in New Jersey. Obviously, has the Gold Nugget brand there in, in Nevada as well. Um, you know, they are getting live in other states. Uh, they, they have a presence in Michigan as well. So uh, the, this is, we don't have time frames on any of these, on when exactly they'll launch. Uh, Gold Nugget had said later this year. Bally's had no idea. Barstool probably as fast as they, they think they can possibly get there. So, um, you know, we've seen Barstool be additive to markets uh, in, in terms of growing handle. It's a little hard to measure when we're this early days, but uh, I think that's the one we're looking at out of those three to, to see what it does in Virginia. And, and I don't remember if we mentioned it here on the podcast or not, Dustin, but you bring up Golden Nugget and didn't Tillman Fertitta spin off the online gambling aspect from the from the parent company? So he actually, it seems like there's at least plans. Maybe it's more of a long-term type deal where, Again, like we, we talk about some of these guys might have been sitting back for a little while, seeing how the markets were all going to play out and then deciding to get involved. It seems like maybe he was one of those lurkers there for a little while, but it's, it formed basically a new a, a new company where he spun off all of the online gaming part from his his major company and, and looks like maybe they're going to be entering some of these markets now. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're if you have an online on, only gambling company, uh, like you said, publicly traded uh, now uh, outside of all that, so it is interesting to see what they will do long term as far as being a part of the market. But yeah, I mean, if they they're they're all in on online gambling in in that arm of the business that is now separate from the the land based casinos. So uh, yeah, they they are trying to get into every state, and obviously Virginia is uh, is a one step toward that. Guys, as always, every single one of the stories that we talk about here on the podcast, you can go and get over at Legal Sports Report. So be sure and go over there and take. Uh, look at all the good work that Adam and his crew, of course, we had Matt Waters on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. We'll be having him on more often. Brad Allen will start making uh, appearances as well here on the pod and, uh, you know, take in all of their good work because, man, these guys are really putting in the time over there. Go, go in, subscribe, rate, and review. We really do appreciate that as well. If you could help us, uh, you know, more people find this podcast, appreciate that. And, of course, you follow Dustin, follow Adam on the Twitter at Dustin Galker at Adam Candy. That's two E's, no Y. And you can follow me if you want to at Matt Brown, M2. Really just bad sports takes and things like that. But uh, we appreciate you being here for episode number 95. We'll talk to you guys next week. Mm-hmm.